complete desert. Our plan is to make it to Sweden, and it's getting harder and harder to make it. We're low on water, and we're in the middle of nowhere, as you can see. We stop in the middle of nowhere, and we have absolutely no clue where we are. When you look at the map, there were actually a road on the maps in Mongolia that in reality aren't really there. You see three Mongolians coming towards us on horses, and we don't know what's going to happen. Well, we don't know where we are at the moment. Yeah, when we first saw these Mongolians, we both looked at each other and thought like, are they armed? A lot of people are armed in Mongolia. Turns out there are three kids and they were from a nomadic village and were really curious about our ATVs. We talked to them a little bit, well, sign language, I suppose. When we asked them for directions, there's a lot of confusion going on. They keep pointing in different directions. It later turns out that when you ask Mongolians for directions, they're gonna point you geographically where it is, and they're also gonna point how to get there. And uh, it turns out we were actually on the right track. So we reached this little fuel station out in the wild and there's this woman running it and we ask her for directions. And then Peter uh, tells me we've done a detour on 105 miles. When Christian got a bit anxious, they were was more worried about where are we, are we safe, are we... Are we gonna get food in time and all that? I got very irritated about the fact that I've been taking us on this long detour because I just made both of our day uh, twice as long. Our plan is to make it to Sweden at a certain date, and it's getting harder and harder to make it. Same rate as the, the environment kept changing, so did the challenging in, in reading the terrain. So I was always looking for those sharp rocks and trying to avoid them. For the first couple of hundred miles, the environment was very green and grassy, and boom, there was a desert. It was just sand and rocks everywhere. We see it in the distance, and we just stop, look at each other, and then we just... It's a complete desert and it's just this horizon and you know there's a little misty view because of the heat and you see those black dots and, and suddenly it just turns out to think like it's horses and then it's like oh no it's camels okay let's go very let's walk very slowly so peter decided to feed the camels with muesli when we approached the camels 
I mean, first of all, they smell terrible. You have to show confidence when you deal with camels. They can smell your fear. They, they look pretty mean. Oh, that fella must be the big guy. But the closer I got, the more I started thinking like, nah, maybe this isn't a good idea. What if he bites my fingers off or something or kicks me in the face? We just arrived outside the Flaming Cliffs and there was this Mongolian guy and he told us about the park ranger guarding the entrance so there's no one trespassing in the area. He kept showing us and drawing maps in the ground like how to avoid them and drive around them. So we decided to follow his advice and we drove a big circle around this little hut. And you have to do it very carefully because there's so much dust behind the ATVs that you can spot them for many, many miles. Oh yeah, As we entered the Flaming Cliffs Canyon, we were very happy to see that there were actually other people and it's the first time that we meet other travelers. It was a, a really nice feeling to, to meet other people to talk to and um, socialize a little bit. After many days of driving, we finally arrive at the big sand dunes of the Gobi Desert. And this has been our biggest goals in, in the Mongolia. Of course, you're gonna play around in it. to think about it, we were probably not that careful about ourselves or the ATVs as we should have. We didn't get any information at all about sand dunes, so yeah, we had no idea what to expect. The first thing that came to my mind when I got stuck on this ridge is like, oh no. I was always a little worried about getting into a situation that we wouldn't be able to get out of, especially as there is nobody to, to ask for help. We first tried to drive it out of the sand, but then we realized it just got deeper and deeper into it. We always have to be on a constant move, because if you stop, you sink in the sand. When you finally got it out of the sand and could continue our journey, we hoped that the entire situation had damaged the machine. All right, here we are, taking a little break. 50 dusty kilometers later, uh, which is very bad, because we're low on water and uh, we're in the middle of nowhere, as you can see. As we came across our first rainstorm on this trip since the desert, that breaks you down a little bit more. Like you go like, ah oh, shit, what is this? Are we gonna have to go through that? We weren't prepared for rain in the desert, so we didn't bring any raincoats or anything. Christian's ATV just refuses to start and we check it through and come to the conclusion it's completely drained of fuel. And uh, we haven't seen a single car for two days or a single human being. And this is the worst possible spot for a situation like this. 